Hello again everyone, Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about Sagittarius relationships, and yes, this does apply and pertain to the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Anyway, people, uh, first thing up is, as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, the first house in astrology uh, represents uh, often the, ma the paternal grandmother and maternal uh, grandfather and Sagittarius, of course, will fall on the first house cusp in a solar or natal chart for this sign. So um, the thing about this is uh, one or both people may have a Sagittarius sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Sagittarius-like uh, characteristics. It could be people that are very buoyant, uh, expansive, jocular, happy-go-lucky, uh, have the what-me-worry type of outlook. People that are very philosophical can have a lot of wisdom, be very uh, sagacious. Um, uh, people that can really be very uh, optimistic, uh, exuberant, and uh, enthusiastic, but very blunt and forthright as well. Now, it could also be that one or both people may be in a Sagittarius-like profession, such as working as an interpreter or translator, uh, working in publishing, uh, doing something connected with adventure or uh, travel, such as working in a travel agency or uh, being a pilot, a cruise director, working with horses or even involved uh, with sports. So. Um, also, too, um, as far as the connection and relationship uh, goes with these people, well, it can be one where there's a lot of exuberance and enthusiasm uh, expressed where you really uh, really have a lot of positive encouragement uh, connected uh, with it. But it can also be one where uh, you're very, where a lot of a bluntness, I guess you could say blunt um, conversation takes place or people very outspoken and forthright uh, with one another and very, uh, very direct, sometimes to the point of demoralizing uh, someone. So anyway, well, the next thing up as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, um, the third house in astrology represents siblings and cousins, and Aquarius often falls on the third house cusp in a solar or natal chart uh, for Sag. So uh, this could be where uh, one or more people uh, connected with the siblings uh, and cousins, they may uh, have an Aquarius sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Aquarius-like characteristics. It could be people that are very eccentric, unorthodox, unique, uh, people that are uh, innovative, ingenious, uh, non-conforming, even rebellious, or one or more may even be like a maverick. Uh, people that are uh, very uh, humanitarian, express a lot of selflessness, uh, but really, uh, and also very unpredictable or even unusual. Now, uh, one or more of these people may be involved in Aquarius uh, professions, such as being an innovator, an inventor, social advocate, uh, working in the environment, such as an environmental engineer, an environmentalist, uh, could be in a computers or electronics vocation, uh, doing something. Uh, that could be, I mean, connected could be aerospace, uh, astronomy, working in an esoteric subject such as astrology. And as far as the uh, relationship and connection goes uh, with these people, it can be one where a lot of selflessness and humanitarianism could be expressed, where you're very, show a lot of consideration uh, toward one another. But it can be one that can be very uh, unpredictable. There might be something unorthodox or unusual about the connection uh, with one or more uh, of these people. And, and one where you express a lot of ingenuity and a lot of new um, ideas, I think, as well. So anyway, uh, next thing up as far as Sagittarius relationships go. Well, the fourth house in astrology represents the less dominant parent. And Pisces, which is often the mother, and Pisces often falls on the fourth house cusp in a solar or nail chart for Sag. So uh, this could be somebody that uh, may have a Pisces sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Pisces-like uh, characteristics. Could be uh, someone that is very uh, self-sacrificing, compassionate, imaginative. Uh, a lot of someone that possesses a lot of empathy. Could even be an empath. It could be. 
uh, someone that um, may be very super sensitive with very all-encompassing uh, emotions. Uh, there might be something nebulous or unclear about this person and ambivalent or something that you find confusing uh, regarding this less dominant parent, which is often uh, the mother. So anyway, well, this person may also be involved in a Piscean uh, profession, such as working as on a dock or bartending, a psychic medium, working in oceanography, photography, chemistry, uh, pharmaceutical work doing something connected with uh, illusion, uh, such as uh, special effects in movies or working as an illusionist or uh, a magician. And as far as the relationship and connection goes uh, with this person, it can be one where uh, it consists of a lot of self-sacrificing, where um, whether it's time or what have you, and uh, one where a lot of compassion and empathy may be shown, but it can be one where there might be, it might be tainted, unfortunately, with a little bit of uh, duplicity and deception, and one where maybe the, the person might seem, uh, as I stated before, this uh, less dominant parent, which is often the mother, might be a little bit nebulous or, uh, or unclear uh, to you, and there might be something confounding or confusing regarding the person. So anyway... Next thing up is, well, as far as a Sagittarius relationships go, well, the fifth house in astrology represents children and uh, love romantic partners, and the zodiac sign Aries often falls on the fifth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sag. So uh, one or more of these people uh, may have an Aries, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody Aries-like uh, characteristics. I uh, may be uh, someone that uh, one or more of these people may be uh, rather a combative or acrimonious or very aggressive, assertive, uh, very forthright, very outspoken, straightforward, and uh, direct. Someone, uh, people that don't mince words, so to speak, uh, rather sometimes even fearless, but yet confrontational. Uh, as well, and someone that, and one or more of these people might express a lot of fortitude and courage, and at least how you may see uh, one or more of these people. And uh, one or more of these people may also be in an Aries like profession, such as uh, doing something uh, connected with leadership or management, uh, something uh, with fire, such as firefighting or arson investigation, uh, welding. Uh, could be involved in some kind of combative sports such as karate, boxing, kickboxing, uh, wrestling, uh, doing uh, some working as a surgeon or an EMT or some profession connected with the head such as designing helmets, for example. And uh, one or more, uh, uh, as far as the relationship and connection goes uh, with one or more of these people, it can be one where you're very forthright and outspoken with one another and where you really don't mince words, so to speak, but one that can be somewhat co uh, confrontational, sometimes a combative and disputatious, but the relationship also can be such where you will uh, fight for each other uh, when necessary, as Aries energy, of course, could be very fearless and courageous. So anyway, well, the next thing up is, well, the sixth house in astrology uh, represents uh, the less dominant parents' uh, siblings. So these are uh, aunts and uncles, and uh, Taurus often falls on uh, the sixth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sagittarius. So uh, one or more of these people may have a Taurus sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Taurus-like characteristics. It could be people that are rather stubborn, obstinate, stolid, uh, very persistent, have strong powers of perseverance and endurance, perhaps, uh, can be ones that might seem somewhat monotonous or even boring uh, to you. Uh, people also that um, really uh, can be very tenacious uh, and very deliberate and methodical and even ponderous. So, uh, also, too, uh, one or more of these people may be involved in a Taurus-like uh, profession, 
such as working in finance, banking, working as a stockbroker, even doing general mundane work like working in a retail outlet, you know, so doing a, working as a stock clerk, uh, something uh, that could be connected with cultivating, gardening, working in architecture. So um, anyway, um, also too, uh, as far as the relationship and connection goes uh, with one or more of these people, it can be one where they're very, um, where you show a lot of loyalty and steadfastness toward uh, each other, one that has a lot of, show a lot of persistence. And uh, it can be one too, where there's a very stubborn quality where this person maybe, or people represented may be, may be somewhat stubborn, not willing to give in. Uh, and it might be something where it's fairly predictable and it might even seem somewhat monotonous or boring uh, to you. Uh, so anyway, well, um, the next thing up is, well, as far as um, uh, the next thing up is, well, the seventh house, uh, as far as Sagittarius relationship go, uh, the seventh house in astrology represents the significant other, marriage partner, and the uh, maternal grandmother and paternal grandfather, or I should say often represents the um, the maternal grandmother and uh, and also the paternal grandfather, generally speaking. So the thing about um, this is one or more, uh, and of course, I mean, you know, this is going to fall with the seventh house, of course. I mean, it's the, I mean, Sagittarius will all, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Gemini will fall on the seventh house cusp in a slower natal chart for Sag. So one or more of these people represented can have a Gemini sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Gemini-like characteristics. It can be people that are rather talkative, a loquacious, mercurial, fickle, changeable, vacillating. Um, people that are very versatile, are dexterous, are very adept with their hands. Uh, it could be people too that also um really uh, i mean i talk about it um, being the chain being changeable and mercurial but also uh ones that can be very whimsical and lighthearted uh as well and um also and also be able to talk about a wide divergence of subjects now also too uh one or more of these people uh may be involved in a gemini like uh profession such as working in writing journalism reporter uh data communication satellite communication excuse me doing something uh with the hands uh because gemini energy of course is dexterous it could be uh, someone that does like auto mechanics or refrigeration mechanics um, and, and, and something where even working as a floater, doing something where the, the person shows diversity and does um, a variety of things. So anyway, well, as far as the connection and relationship goes uh, with this, uh, with one or more of these people, uh, can be one, I mean, that can be somewhat superficial and on the surface where really a lot of deep emotions are not, are generally may not be expressed, but it can be one that's full of variety and diversity uh, where you really strongly disdain uh, monotony and uh, one that, that really may never be boring or uh, monotonous, but it's one that might not have the most uh, consistency in it. So anyway. Uh, going to, uh, okay, as far again, as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, the eighth house in astrology represents intimate sexual uh, relationships, and the zodiac sign Cancer will often fall on the eighth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sag. So, one or more of these people represented may have a Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant, or simply embody Cancerian like characteristics. It can be people that are very sympathetic, uh, nurturing, protective, nostalgic, uh, that are enamored with um, ancestral uh, worship. They could be homebodies, very introverted, um, people that have, have very strong uh, emotions, and, uh, and really uh, to people that could be somewhat moody or temperamental or uh, fickle. And the thing too is uh, one or more of these people may be involved in a Cancerian-like profession, such as working as a historian, 
uh, culinary cooking, working in a restaurant or fast food place, uh, doing something connected with the home, such as home remodeling, uh, renovation, restoration, siding, roofing. Uh, so it's really, um, so, or, or maybe even working as a lifeguard near the water. And uh, as far as um, the connection and uh, relationship goes uh, with one or more of these people, it can be one where very strong emotions are expressed, but where, the, where you and the other per person or people involved may be very strongly uh, sensitive to criticism and uh, ridicule, and one where you show a lot of protection toward each other and, and care, and where you really, where the time spent might be in a very introverted manner, much time in uh, the home, maybe as opposed to being outdoors, which of course can, I mean, it might almost be an anathema to Sagittarius because Sagittarius, of course, is really more outdoorsy uh, than most. So anyway, well, the next thing up is as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, the ninth house in astrology represents in-laws and grandchildren, and Leo will often fall on the ninth house cusp in a solar or natal chart uh, for Sag. So one or more of these people may have a Leo sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Leo-like characteristics. It can be uh, people that could be very magnanimous, generous, uh, even may come across as arrogant or egotistical, very proud and dignified, flamboyant, very showy, people that have a lot of charisma and very strong uh, presence, people that like to entertain, uh, perhaps in very extroverted and gregarious. Now, one or more of these people may be involved in a Leo-like uh, profession, such as working in entertainment, theater, acting, working as an actress, a cardiologist, a cardiac surgeon, doing some working as a promoter, or I think even so, I mean, even sometimes even doing sales because um, Leo energy, of course, is about boasting about products. And I mean, what they when they work with products, they can boast about them, even build them up really uh, mean to a point where they, they act almost oblivious to the negative, uh, any any negatives associated with it. So they could really be good. I mean, Leo energy can be very good connected with sales. So it could even be somebody in sales, perhaps, or working in promotion, as I stated uh, before, doing something with the working with children, children or some creative field, or even does that doing something with games, designing games, whether it might be video games or board games or what have you. Anyway, next thing up as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, the 10th house in astrology represents the dominant parent, which is often the father, and Virgo often falls on the 10th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sag. So this could be someone that may have a Virgo sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Virgo-like characteristics. It can be someone that's rather persnickety, uh, per particular, uh, even a maybe borderline compulsive complainer. It could be someone that's very critical, judgmental, but yet analytical and very uh, verbose. It could be someone that's very wordy uh, as well. Uh, pedantic even, uh, someone that could be very clean, maybe borderline neat freak, uh, person that's very organized and could even be very meticulous uh, dresser. Now, I uh, could even be, I mean, uh, this person may also be involved in a Virgo-like profession, such as working as a data analyst, a uh, professional organizer, uh, working in status uh, statistics, doing something connected with extrapolation of data, uh, someone that might even do detailing, like detailing on a vehicle is what I'm saying, um, doing a, maybe even um, as far as Virgo profession, something connected with the health field, such as working as a nutritionist or dietitian, or something where they're just simply of service uh, to somebody, because Virgo energy can be very service oriented, but generally not in an officious or unwanted manner. Now, uh, as far as the relationship goes with this dominant parent, which is often the father, it can be one where you do provide a lot of service toward one another, but one that can be, unfortunately, maybe tainted perhaps with a lot of criticism 
uh, toward one another and being very particular about things with each other and even things that might not necessarily be overly important or significant. And, uh, and it could be one too, where really, uh, I mean, when you look at it, where you're very, where you look after maybe each other's health uh, very strongly as well as Virgo is the sign connected with health. So uh, anyway, well, um, the next thing up is as far as Sagittarius relationships go. Well, uh, the 11th house in astrology represents friends and stepchildren. And Libra often falls on the 11th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sagittarius. So uh, one or more of these people may have a Libra sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply embody Libra-like characteristics. Uh, can be people that are very charming, cultured, refined, tactful, uh, diplomatic. People that are really strongly about compromise and reconciliation. People that want peace and harmony and uh, people that are can be strongly about negotiation and uh, anyway uh, it also could be that one or more of these people may be involved in a Libra like profession such as working as a diplomat a marriage counselor something connected with um, with art such as um, such as something with abstract art or painting or um, even fashion design uh, modeling, uh, working in some field which is associated with negotiation or arbitration, working in a legal field such as working as a lawyer, attorney, paralegal, court reporter, uh, bailiff, or judge. Now, this could be as far as the relationship and connection goes with one or more of these people. It could be often one where it's strongly about compromise and fairness and equality. Libra energy, of course, is very equitable and fair-minded. But at the same time, it can be where one uh, or more people, I mean, really can abhor of injustice very strongly and will speak their mind very strongly if something is not fair in any way, shape, or form as far as the connection goes, as far as your dealings uh, with one another. So anyway, um, well, last but not least, um, uh, as far as Sagittarius relationships go, well, the 12th house in astrology uh, represents uh, the dominant parents' uh, siblings. And so we're talking about aunts and uncles. And the zodiac sign Scorpio will often fall on the 12th house cusp in a solar or natal chart for Sag. So one or more of these people may have a Scorpio sun, moon, uh, or ascendant, or simply embody Scorpio-like characteristics. It can be people... Uh, that are very uh, sometimes surreptitious, uh, very insightful, incisive, uh, can be ones that he might even have a little uh, sneakiness uh, connected with them. Uh, people that are very resourceful, willful, have very strong willpower, um, can be ones too that are very secretive and, uh, and private uh, as well. And, uh, and really in very intent and very uh, perhaps even emotionally uh, intense and people that can really uh, be able to see through subterfuge and superficiality very easily. Uh, it could be too that one or more of these people uh, may be involved in a Scorpio-like uh, profession uh, such as working as a sex therapist, mortician, coroner, embalming, working as a locksmith doing something with the occult supernatural, something with astrology, uh, could be involved uh, with, I mean, really uh, doing, uh, working as a surgeon, perhaps, uh, something, uh, working as a, maybe a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So anyway, but as far as the relationship and connection goes with one or more of these people, uh, it can be one where it could be very difficult to prevaricate or lie to each other because Scorpio energy can be about seeing through subterfuge and superficiality. So a lot of that will be connected likely with this, with these connections. And it can be one where you're somewhat secretive, where you don't really, and, and there's a more of mystery where you really may not know a lot about uh, each other, not really share a lot of private things uh, with one another. And one that can be very uh, intense 
and could be a very powerful connection though but at the same time in some cases it can be destructive so anyway well anyway people that will conclude this youtube astrological segment for sagittarius relationships and stay tuned next time where i'll be talking about capricorn relationships two things i want to get with you on before i head out Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.